Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad and today I have a very special video for you. We are going to do an in-depth review on our newest project car, this 2023 Toyota GR Supra. So I've been lucky enough to be driving this car for over a week now. I have put almost 2,000 miles on the car. I have driven the car from New Jersey to Colorado, across a great number of states, and I think I'm qualified at this point to give you an honest review of both the pros and the cons of this car. So if you're interested in learning more about this 2023 Toyota GR Supra, then stay tuned. Please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you can be informed of future videos. Remember, this is our second car, second car of two project cars. There will be plenty of future content for this 2023 Toyota Supra. We will take a look at maintenance items. We are going to go a little bit more in depth on certain aspects, features of this car. We're gonna look at modifications. We're gonna install the modifications. We're gonna test the modifications. I'm gonna take it to the dyno. We'll find out exactly how much horsepower, how much torque modifications make on this car. We're gonna take it to the track. We're gonna see how well our zero to 60 times, our quarter mile times improve. We may even autocross the car. So I have a lot of different ideas for this car, both performance oriented as well as cosmetic. And if you're interested in following along, then please subscribe. The front and the rear have 19 inch wheels. They come with super sticky Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. And new for 2023 are these frozen gunmetal rims. And I really like these. The front brakes are four piston calipers in this nice red, a great contrast with the blue. Also, I like the added touch of the Toyota Super being written on the caliper, which is really cool. The back has the same size 19 inch rims and the same Michelin Pilot Super Sport uh, tires. The front is 255 35 19s, the rear are 275, so a little bit wider, 275 35 19s. If you look closely, the hood actually comes way down on the belt line of the fender. And we'll pop the hood in a second, and take a look at the engine. But on the hood, you also have this vent, which is really not a real vent. It's just a piece of plastic. It'd be nice if it was functional, maybe clearing out some of the heat from the fender well, or given that it's within the engine bay, clearing out some of that hot engine bay heat. We have similar to the front, we have these air inlets that really are not air inlets. <laughs> they don't do anything. Nonetheless, I do appreciate them. I think they add some nice styling touches. Let's take a look at the back. First thing you notice is the raised integrated spoiler. We have dual exit exhaust and they are functional. I think they look really good. We have this rear brake light and I love how the rear lights kind of stand out. And what I mean by that is you have a lot of different creases with the rear lights, a lot of creases with how the trunk ties into the rear bumper, even with the rear bumper uh, tying into the rear spoiler and the diffuser here. One thing you quickly notice is the bubble roof. So it is indented in the middle and the two bubbles on either side, it does add to the headroom for the driver and the passenger and supposedly it does assist with the aerodynamics of the car. The 2023 GR Supra 3.0 comes with a 3.0 inline six turbocharged engine sourced from BMW. So this is the BMW B58. It has a twin scroll turbocharger and the engine produces 382 horsepower and 368 foot pounds of torque. The Supra has pretty good trunk space and it proved enough for me and my son to drive three quarters of the way across the United States. So let's talk about the inside of the car. It is roomier than I thought in some regards. So legroom, fantastic. Storage space, not so much. 
a small glove box. You have two cup holders, not put in the best position. Bump it with your elbows a little bit. This piece does not open up, so it's not like you have storage capacity under there. And yes, you do have a little, a little, very small pocket in the door. However, when you do put things in the door pocket, it's hard to retrieve those things. Not a lot of storage capacity within the cabin. But as I mentioned, it is easy to reach into the trunk, given that this is open back here, if you were to put things in between the two subwoofers on the shelf here, uh, it you could make things work. These are great seats. I am overly critical of seats, both in the texture. So these are leather, obviously, not a surprise. The leather is not overly stiff or firm, but it's not too soft where sometimes I would worry about premature wear. So it's a nice combination. These are definitely sport seats. They hug you. These side bolsters are adjustable, so they can open up and close to your back width, which is great. Lots of adjustment within the seats themselves, so you can find a nice seating position. And the lumbar support, great lumbar support. I found that, that incredibly helpful. Um, the entire drive back across country, doing it over three or four days, I did not have any back problems. So I love the seats. So a lot of people complain about the visibility of this car. I did not find the visibility out the front windshield to be a problem whatsoever. Out the sides, the roof line does come down a little further than most cars and that may inhibit your visibility. So in our trip, there was a toll booth and of course we're sitting low and I had to really scrunch my head to be able to get the ticket and then later on to pay. But really it's not that bad. And on the plus side, one thing that I really liked about it is because this came, it comes down a little lower, it helps protect you from the sun, which is great because you're visor does not detach and will not fold over we did use the charger the wireless charger in this car and i can't say that i'm too impressed by it it takes a while for the phone to charge and on more than one occasion my phone overheated while charging so yeah your instrument panel the brightness is too dim everything looks really dim so if you're looking at the clock at the top right or even the outside temperature and the clock within the dash they're very very dim and i've tried multiple times through the roller dial on the side here to increase them and that dial doesn't do anything so i do like the fact that the tachometer is the center of attention uh right there in the center of the gauge Within the middle of the tachometer is your gear. And I think I would change that because this car having a digital speedometer, I would probably put that speedometer in the middle of the tachometer. So this specific car does have the optional driver's assistance package, which I believe is $1,195 right around there. Um, definitely worth it. So what you get is the dynamic radar cruise control and it's super helpful. It's full range. What it also has is your parking sensors, which is great, um, especially given that the front hood of this car is long in comparison to the rest of the car. It's longer and it's hard to judge where truly where the front of the vehicle is. So having those parking sensors uh, is a relief for me also has the blind spot monitoring system. It also has uh, brake assist, front and rear. One gripe that I have is I'm surprised that given this 12 speaker JBL Hi-Fi sound system with, with two sizable woofers in the back, I expected more. I expected some nice deep bass and you don't get that from this car. So one of the first things you notice about this car is the accelerator pedal. It's pretty firm, 
especially at the top. You do need to give it some muscle to get it going. And in a way, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, so you don't accidentally floor it, start spinning the tires and lose control. But it is definitely noticeable. It's different uh, than a lot of other cars I've driven. Next to the accelerator, the brakes. The brakes are great. And I can't say that I've, had, I've been able to say that about any Toyota or Lexus uh, car for that matter. I've always found their brakes to be kind of mushy and that is not the case with the Supra. The brakes grab nicely all from the very beginning, right at the top of it. Um, not too grabby, but definitely sports car grabby. You get used to it and learn how to modulate it, but it feels really reassuring. What I'm really impressed by is the level of comfort, driving comfort. The ride, the suspension, it's an adaptive suspension. It has normal mode and it does have sport mode. Regardless of which mode you're using, it is very compliant, much more so than I would have expected. Driving all that distance, I was really comfortable. It's really smooth, really enjoyable. Uh, the car just feels very, very tight and well put together, as well it should be given that it's a Toyota slash BMW. When it comes to steering feel, it's superb. It feels really, really good, especially in this day and age with electronic steering. They can be over boosted or just feel very, very artificial. And I'm not saying that it's perfect, but I was really concerned given that I had a BMW in the past and I wasn't very impressed by the steering feel, especially on center, it just felt really dead. And then in sport mode, felt very overly boosted. This feels fantastic. You're always aware that this is a rear wheel drive car. So you give it a little bit too much gas, that torque reminds you of what it can do. So going around a corner, even accelerating hard, if you don't have perfect traction, you'll get a little bit, not scary, it doesn't feel like you're going to lose control but just enough to remind you that it's rear wheel drive. So let's put it in sport mode, which is impressive from an exhaust note. So it gives you more pops, gurgles. Uh, the shifts are much more crisp. The steering, not overly boosted like the BMW I had. It feels very, very nice. The suspension, still very compliant, still very comfortable. So one thing I hate about this car is it has the start stop feature. When you come to a stop, it's gonna cut off the engine to save gas. And I get it, I understand that. Other cars have that, fine. But I would like to turn it off and have it remain off. But this car doesn't do that. What happens is you turn it off and then you stop the car get out of the car every time you get back into your car you got to turn it off again so it drives me nuts the exhaust on this car is nice now I have it in sport mode it does have pops and crackles when you rev the engine it sounds super aggressive I will tell you that it does have some drone on the highway, but the tone, the frequency, the volume is not deafening. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. There is some crackling pops. And I'll do a video more focused on the exhaust noises. But anyway, there is a drone. You get it on the highway, you hear it back there, but it isn't all that bad so it didn't give me a headache of driving you know I was driving seven eight hour days driving it back from New Jersey to Colorado and I was fine you know it's there but it, it's not horrible but it does make me wonder how does an aftermarket exhaust sound on this will it be too much uh, it pulls hard Once it gets going, it's got a 
lot of torque down low. It just keeps building. Also new for 2023 is the manual transmission. Now, because it is new, everybody's trying to get one, and you're probably gonna pay a markup. If you are looking to purchase one, definitely consider reaching out to Toyota of Hackensack. So it's Hackensack, New Jersey. This is where I purchased mine. I was able to get this 2023 Toyota GR Supra 3.0 Premium with the driver's assistance package with the eight-speed automatic at MSRP. If you're looking for one, you're having a hard time trying to find a dealer that will work with you, give them a call. So what do I think? Uh, I am happy with the purchase and I ran a big risk of buying the car without test driving it. It's the first car I ever did that. Do not recommend doing that. Always test drive the car first. Ran a risk of having features or aspects of the car that I really don't like and, and regretting it. I don't regret it. So I did point out some things that um, I don't like about the car, but certainly they're not to the extent that I regret the decision for purchasing it. Quite the contrary. There's a lot to like about the car. A lot of aspects of this car uh, I thought I would enjoy and I enjoy even more than I thought. Then there's aspects I didn't even think about, like the ride quality, that is really impressive. Uh, I really like it. Like the cabin noise, where it, for all intents and purposes, it's fairly quiet. Yes, you hear the exhaust. You he definitely hear the exhaust. But to me, that's a noise I want to hear. So I'm okay with that. So I'm super happy with the purchase. I love the car. I am going to do some further in-depth reviews on different features like let's get into the navigation the infotainment all the options on the screen things that would make this video obscenely long uh, so i'll go in depth in additional features if there's something you'd like to see please put it down in the comments below so with that said thank you very much for joining and until next time